So they talking about Tuka, they finna talk about him. Tuka the one who uh was beef with King Von and stuff. Remember that was like that video we had Rick who was still trapping? He was like smoking on Tuka. He talking about him, cause he dead. Oh wow. Real, a true gangster would tell you that this is not the life that you wanna live. <laughs> Nigga today. <laughs> Don't get, don't get, don't get toe up. What do you mean my ring? Like, Come on, what? Broke. What's up with it, gang? It's your boy Josh and your boy Jay, and it's <laughs> twin <laughs> them. Man. And today, this has been a highly, highly, highly requested video. We will be reacting to King Von, soft-spoken assassin. If you're new to the channel, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. We on the road to 50k. 50k man like comment subscribe share the video you have soft spoken assassin by king von i don't know what this video is about i guess it's like a this video is 12 like a mini a mini doc it's nine minutes it's nine minutes i think it's like a mini documentary on king von or something i didn't say that i don't know but yeah let's get to the video man oh, this king von. Where's King? Hey, where's King? Where's King Vaughn from? 60 feet? Okay. He's not from 60 feet. Let's see him. He's 64. 64 to 60 feet. Alright, so probably the person that I get the most requested for a video on, the rapper I've been rocking for a while now. King Vaughn. No doubt the most demonic figure that's come out of Chicago since the drill music wave in the 2010s. Fans are really what? enamored with his storytelling and music videos, real. but for the life of me, I what don't know how King Von Did y'all see all them mug shots? Those were... <laughs> Chicago since the drill really? music wave in the 2010s. Fans are really okay. enamored with his storytelling. That, that might be what, 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 what I end up missing. What is drill music? Like, shoot, like, violent. Music videos, but for the life of me, I don't know how King Von is a free man. I mean, bless him. All blessings to him. He's somehow been able to two C slide and dodge every single case that's been thrown at him since he was 15. <laughs> and while his partner Rondo was toting a bazooka. Look, somebody just said, have him react to King Von's fucking assassin while he's doing the video. Tell us. The gram, King Von was on Twitter arguing with a mortal enemy over how many bodies they each got. And this was trolling the fuck out of the police, right? They couldn't stand it. See, in Chicago, only 20% of murders Did it say I'm trying to just kill? Hmm? Did it say I'm trying to just kill? Yeah. Live TV from 85 plus channels. Moving 80% go unsolved. 20 years for the murders. Plus the gun has been lost. That's 21 years. So that's 41 years. That's for the murders. I got two attempt murders. And you beat all the You got two what? Attempt murders. Yeah, I'm gonna play. Now, he we're said gonna get into all play. this, but before we do, let me show you my song of the day. This is Mark Battles. Let's you go. Uh, in order to understand this story, we gotta go to Chicago. More specifically, the Parkway Gardens in the South Side. 84 for Cottage before. Grove! Now, not only is this the home of Chief Keith and King Vaughn, yeah, it's also the home that. of the former First Lady, Michelle Obama, who, when she looks back at her Michelle experience, Obama's. says it was never as bad as it is now. The area has always been a huge Whoa. war between two factions. The Beatles 84 and Cottage Grove was over by Good Years, and y'all have lost it at least the 90s. Oh, but back then there was more structure, okay. it was organized, and it was mostly a battle over That's drug disciples. trade. The BDs controlled a oh, massive sixteen story yeah. housing yeah. complex just two minutes away from Old Block, posting uh -huh. snipers on the roof to protect their drug dealers. Lookouts were equipped with night vision goggles. Snipers on the, entire the roof. The organization was pulling in three hundred thousand dollars a day for damn near fifteen years. The BDs were run like a corporation. Money was laundered through investments into apartment buildings, a record label called MLB, car wash and a nightclub in Atlanta. But the leadership was taken out in 2004 with a massive police raid. Their headquarters was permanently closed and eventually demolished. 50 people were charged. Whole leadership 
gone. All the BDs migrated to Oblock and created alliances with the sets around the area to go against their rival gang, the GDs. Now the GDs, which stands for Gangster Disciples, also had their leadership taken down. And now neither of the two gangs have any structure anymore coming from the top to the bottom. It's basically just kids running around with a profound hatred for each other, trying to blow each other's heads off. And this shit escalated even further in the 2010s with Chief Keef and the rise of drill music. Chief Keef, Rondo, Lil Reese, Lil Dirk, and most of the people who saw success during the height of the drill scene were all black disciples. The gangster disciples had very little representation in mainstream music. The most notable figures were FBG Duck, Lil J, Lil Jojo. So the fact that Chief Keef. Okay, so FBG Duck, he did. He, did. he, control- he got uh, shot while he was shopping. So I'm, gu- I'm guessing FBG Duck, well, I'm not guessing, but he from GD, he a gang, but GD. GD's gangster disciples. That's 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 their their gang sign. And you got you got vice lords of the VLs. Um, I hate. Well, truth be told, uh, I got y'all away from that kind of foolishness, uh, or tried to keep y'all away from it. But it seems like, <laughs> for whatever the reason. Uh, y'all seem to glorify in the music. No, but, but we don't the, glorify. At the end of the day, a real, a true gangster would tell you that this is not the life that you want to live. People who are really, really banging and slanging will tell you that this is not the life that you want to live. And here your daddy is telling you that it's not the life that you want to live. Y'all can't live that living with me. <laughs> airwaves and the popular sound made it so they could put super disrespectful lyrics towards the gangster disciples in their songs and it would become mainstream the best example is tuka tuka's death became okay so they talking about tuka they finna talk about tuka the one who uh was beef with king vine and stuff Remember that was like that video we had Rick who was still trapping? He was like smoking on Tuka. He talking about him, cause he did. Oh wow. The focal point for a lot of that ones because the gang members that killed Tuka then use social media to really insult his memory. In this case, uh, you have this young man actually in his coffin right. and this image has also been defiled see Tuka was a deceased 15 year old boy that Chief Keef and Dirk would constantly mock he must be dang that's just see and that's he the said, type of, I dig him up and smoke him again that's that's this this is the kind of ignorant hatred that that gets pushed off uh, for us as a people. And it's like, you have to think back and wonder why and where's the stuff coming from. <clears throat> it's, a, it's, a, it's a slavery mentality. And it's just a shame that, that it's grown up with uh, generations of, of, of folk. Man, you got the house. I didn't even know Chief Keep was in it. Yeah. The house versus the field. And at the end of the day, all slaves are still slaves. Ain't nobody getting paid. Their songs and the lyric became so popular you had rappers like Lil Pump who had nothing to do with the situation he's from Miami you had Young M.A. who's from New York and even NLE Chapa who's from Memphis they would use Tuka in their songs or in everyday life without even knowing what it meant now you recently said some shit about Lil Pump and he used uh, the smoking Tuka a lot to this day you probably think that everything I don't do but no when I see him, I'm gonna slap you. Young M.A. said it. And, you know, well, what? Because he's talking about his dead father. You said, when I see you, I'm gonna slap you. talking about the little part. Okay, okay. I can understand the anger, but at the end of the day, you see him and you slap him, and then he's gonna slap you back, and everybody's gonna be well, proud of him. Who's Lil Pump? Who was Lil Pump? That was rapping. The little white boy that be rapping. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. That's hard. That's all I want. See, the hatred between the GDs and the BDs ran so deep. The feud was so strong. You even got King Vaughn on video teaching a little kid how to shoot a water gun while saying F Tuka. Fuck Tuka. Fuck Tuka. Fuck Tuka. Shoot him in his head. Boom. Fuck Tuka. Say it. 
Now the death of this kid, Tuka, spawned something that was never before seen. A 17-year-old female assassin named Chikaira, who created a social media account that... Oh yeah, she... She went on a rampage. She murdered like 10 people. Okay, how do y'all know this mess? Because I watch videos before. Social media. <sighs> Y'all watch videos. Of she got like 10 bodies. Watch, she been tell y'all. To avenging his death. She was known to her rivals as somebody who was willing to, to shoot first, to ask questions later. It's all over the internet. Shakira was on social media bragging about the shootings that she had done. She was proud and mm -hmm. she let everybody know. She was very quick to let you know that she was violent and that she was not afraid to shoot somebody. It was said Jakaira was responsible for at least 15 shootings before she herself was eventually killed. Afterwards, a 4chan user hacked her Twitter and leaked DMs showing her and King Vaughn had this weird back and forth where King Vaughn was attempting to romance her in like a mocking way, I don't know, maybe it was real, despite the fact that they were both rival gang members. And she didn't like dudes, she liked girls. But reading the tweets and listening to his interviews, you can tell King Vaughn is a clever, smooth talker, right? He's smooth, but he's also a goddamn demon. A blood trail seems to follow him wherever he goes. And King Vaughn was becoming an infant his figure in the Chicago PD briefing room, so they hated him. Police would bring him in for an armed robbery charge, possession of an illegal firearm, and they had suspicions of other stuff that they could never prove. One murder of a kid. So really, Kane Vaughn really had it come. He had it come. So what happened to him? He had it come. He got so many bodies. It don't make no sense. It's not surprising, but at the end of the day, you still have a talent that's wasted, and and. There's no, there's no coming back from that. If you could, if you could interview him now, he would say, you know what, I was tripping. Cause it's stupid. At the end of the day, it's stupid. What's cool is being able to sit, to sit, gray haired, and talk with your grand and great grandkids. That's what's cool. This ignorant mess. It's like you got, you got, young black folk arguing and fighting against one another for what? Street cred, or for, for. Man. It's, just, it's stupid. It's stupid and it's unnecessary. It's just really unfortunate because folk don't wake up until they get grown. They say youth is wasted on the young. It is true. You'll figure that out later on. Dell, allegedly, according to the internet detectives on Reddit, <clears throat> has King Vaughn's name written all over it. It happened on a Saturday night I'm where just 24 other people were wounded across Chicago. Why? That wouldn't stop King Vaughn from boasting about Modell's death on Twitter all the time. Now finally, in 2014, the police thought they had something. Vaughn and one of his friends were at a crowded house party when a rival GD named Malcolm Stucky was in the corner, mean mugging them. Vaughn and them took offense, immediately left the party, came back 45 minutes later, shooting at the kid Stucky, who was outside, along with two other people who tried to run. Stucky was killed, the two others were wounded, and King Vaughn and his friend were snatched up by police a couple days later. After three and a half years, the trial finally started. It lasted a grand total of five days. Witnesses couldn't be located. Vaughn kept his mouth shut for the whole three years, while his friend confessed to doing the shooting. So, Vaughn beat the case, went home, and his friend got 28 years. As soon as Vaughn was out, the dude he was always arguing with on Twitter, named Wooski, who's a gangster disciple, and his mortal enemy, was attending a funeral at the Bethlehem Star Baptist Church when all- I'm already know what's gonna happen. I'm already knowing. I ain't even seen the video. Suddenly, an AK-47 pistol, AKA a Draco, was whipped out and started spraying into the crowd. Dozens of shots rang off and Wooski was shot. Now he survived and King Vaughn was not responsible for this, but that does not stop him from mocking him every chance he gets on Instagram Live. At a funeral, bro? Shit, I'm going to be changing them off when I was and this is why Vaughn's fans fuck with him, right? It's the authenticity, it's the allure of the savageness, right? That the fans like. They like that in their music. I don't think they like it in real life, though. Anyways, now Vaughn is in Atlanta making crazy music videos with dope storylines, and his channel's got 150 million views in 11 months, right? He's blowing up, and his fans are diehards, right? They're crazy. They read into everything he posts, looking for clues. Like, this man posted an Insta story just trying to promote his new music video. And people were reading into how many skulls he put in his caption. Like, seven skulls? That's seven bodies. King Von has seven bodies. Mm -hmm. He even got to the point where King Von went live on Instagram himself and said, listen, if the internet was right about the bodies people had 
they would be in jail. So don't believe what anyone says. I repeat, anyone. And I'll be honest, I hope that's true. Bless it. All I know is this. In Chicago, the clubs close at like 12, right? It doesn't go past 12 because of the violence. And I know that King Von can't go to Canada to do shows. He can't go to overseas to do shows. So it's a blessing and a curse, right? Because of his history, King Von creates this allure and this personality that people want to rock with his music, but also fucks up his business opportunities. Hold on, no, baby, is that Asian bread? That's pretty much it for this video. No. I'm responsible for this. But that does not stop him from mocking him no, every chance he gets. I ain't go back there. I'm trying to see this right now. Okay, you wait. He's a diehard. But listen. The internet was right about the you minds people the had, they would be in jail. Sorry. So don't believe what anyone says. I repeat, anyone. And I'll be honest, I hope that's true. <clears throat> Bless him. All I know is listen, in Chicago, the clubs close at like 12, right? It doesn't go past 12 okay. because of the violence. And I know that King Von can't go to Canada to do shows. He can't go to overseas to do shows. So it's a blessing and a curse, right? Because of his history, King Von creates this allure and this personality that people want to rock with his music, but also fucks up his business opportunities. I can see. That's crazy. All right. So now we got another, another talent gone for nothing. The world will never know folk <clears throat> like me end up finding out his music way late. Well, yeah, that's our first time watching it. Yeah, that's, uh, that was a good. It hurts. It was a good documentary, though. I learned a lot. It hurts. It's unnecessary. I learned a lot. Stay away from the foolishness, man. Well, yeah, I, that was a good, good documentary. Just DM me from uh, if you got more suggestions. But yeah, if you're new to the channel, make sure you like, comment, subscribe on the road to 50k. But yeah, man. Yeah, if you're new to the channel, make sure you like, comment, subscribe on the road to 50k. Y'all be safe, man. Peace.